News. Lobbyists are fed up with politicians accepting their money and then not coming through. Opinion. When the automated police force orders you inside, that's just them doing their job. Remix. Remix. Even lost my job partially due to the whole global warming issue. Increase in oil prices. This guy's scared. This is Top Story with Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. I've been a listener for about 20 years. I'm, I'm talking to you makes me feel better. Where the news meets your opinion. Pick up the phone and talk about it. 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. And welcome to Top Story. 736-0300 is always the number to call. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, Kelly. Happy Friday. That's right. The third day of the Twin Falls County Fair. That's right. And earlier this week, we talked to John Pitts, the fair manager, and how mm-hmm. things were going along. And now that it's going, we, th- when we talked to him Tuesday, we said, hey, John, can we call you this week maybe Bug you friday, friday morning yeah. bug you because you got nothing else to do no. you know? shoot He's so just can sitting we just... back eating chocolate covered donuts that's with right. the and you know twin falls sheriffs that's right <laughs> and, the, and the and the coconut salads and stuff yeah. <laughs> good morning john good morning john morning. how uh, are you great so how's the fair going oh pretty good they got uh i uh, have had good weather so far and really good turnout monster truck show and and pretty decent attendance last night. It's first night of rodeo. Great, great rodeo last night. Oh, okay. yeah, we heard the monster truck show really killed. Like it was a double from last year. Yeah, it was. It was up quite a bit, and uh, they put on. They put on a great show too. Oh, good. The most important thing, though, have you had a chance to try out any more of the of the food? That's, that's what Kelly wants to um, know. Yeah, I've, I've, I've kind of stayed the first couple of days. You kind of always stay with the old staples like the pork sickles and the, <laughs> and the jalapeno limeade. And Ew. I did try something new yesterday, though. I had monkey bread for breakfast and chased it down with jalapeno limeade. That was pretty good. That was what? Mon- what did you say that was? Monkey bread? Yeah. And chased it down with jalapeno Jal- limeade? Yeah. How was that? It was really good. They complement each other well. So monkey bread, can you? What's that all about? It's uh, almost like little. Uh, it's almost like a caramel roll, only it's in little chunks. Is it kind of like cinnamon or something like cinnamon bread? No, it's caramel. They drizzle. Wow. They do the. They do the little bread chunks, and then they drizzle when they cook them, and drizzle caramel over it, and then sprinkle walnuts on top. Oh my! Are so, you going to be able to recover after this? Uh, these this. <laughs> Five, six days at the fair? Are you going to be able to have withdrawals? What's going to happen to your poor little body there? Yeah, I, I always do kind of have withdrawals after fair. It's one of those where you you got six days, you're running and gunning, and you show up Tuesday morning, and there's garbage everywhere, and there's nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> and you've gained 10 pounds. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I'm down. Him. I had to punch another hole in my belt the other night. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, crying out loud. Well... It's probably because all that work you have to do over there. But you got things in 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 pretty good order, I know. And uh, so, in nothing major uh, on the on the downside, I guess. Huh? It just kind of turns into a science after so long, doesn't it? Yeah, and when you got good help, why that always helps too. You don't have quite as much of the little stuff to worry about. Yeah. How is um, attendance like overall well, for the we've general been staying stuff? About steady with as it was last year. I think yesterday we were down couple hundred from last year's Thursday but you know with a couple of schools being in session that's gonna I know I wondered yeah. if that hurt you well like I say we're down a couple hundred yeah but I'm sure they're with them being out, out of school today and then through the weekend I'm sure that'll balance itself back out yeah so is there another rodeo tonight yes so right. we got so we got the rodeo tonight and and tomorrow night also or when is the last night of that yep Saturday night's the last night of the rodeo and how much is the rodeo, John? Um, tonight and tomorrow night are cheaper than Saturday night. It's kind of law of supply and demand. We come close to selling out on Saturday night. But uh, general admission for the rodeo tonight, if they stop by the fair office, I believe it's 12 or $13. I don't have a brochure right in front of me right now. I'm actually out on the grounds. Okay. Um, and, tomorrow, uh, and then Saturday night is 16 for reserve. And you have a concert Sunday night, right? Yes. Okay. Is that that hasn't sold out yet, has it? Oh no, no. We still got some 
seats left for it, and uh, the arena is general. The arena floor is general admission, and it's standing room only. We can put a lot of people in there. And who's the headliner? It's Dustin Lynch. Okay. All right. Cowboys and Angels, and she cranks my tractor song. And <laughs> she cranks my tractor song. That sounds yeah. like pretty country. So now, yeah, it's pretty country. <laughs> is there anything the last night, Monday night? No, we uh, we close the fair at, at nine on Monday. And uh, with everybody needing to get back to school and all the 4-H kids trying to get gathered up and going home, I, we we tried for quite a few years trying to figure out what to put on Monday night that would that would bring anybody in the stands. And everybody's tired and wanting to go home, so we just decided to close the fair down a little early that day and leave the grandstand dark. All right. Okay, well, that great. sounds good to me. Well, John, I know you're a busy man, so we'll let you go, and we appreciate the update. All righty. Thank you. All right. John, have, have a good a great weekend. rest of the fair. Right. As long as you keep the weather coming good, we'll be fine. All I think right. it's going to be cool. Yeah, It'll be nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, high 70s <laughs> today, I think. Yeah, that's that's all right. Okay. I mean, thank you. You bet, Okay, Don. John, we'll, take we'll care. We'll talk to you soon. That's uh, John Pitts, Twin Falls County Fair Manager. So. He sounded a little tired. He might have needed some jalapeno coffee <laughs> or something. <laughs> right. Jalapeno hey, limeade. Oh, I want, my goodness. I want to mention, too, that I got a call from uh, Jack Jardine, who's on the Twin Falls County Fair Foundation, and he said that for those who are handicapped and need a little extra help, they have that the foundation has uh, some shuttle little shuttle carts at the entrances there. So if you need help getting... Mm-hmm into the fair, uh, like maybe to go eat or whatever, and then afterwards you can give them a call, and they'll come and pick you up and and shuttle you to where you need to go. Nice. Um, that they will do that. Well, good. So. And, spe- oh, are we going to play our little come on? It's not Friday without our... Our little come on? It's not Friday? Until we have our little music So here, this, right? then, is yeah. that what you're talking about? <laughs> All right, there you go. Especially there for a go. long weekend, the last long weekend of summer. Yep, yeah, I know. Bummer. I know. You have three in summer, and that's it. I know. We didn't want to play that before, John, because we knew he was busy, and we needed oh, to yeah. talk to him and let him get about his, but now, come his on. business. But We're now, in Friday mode, Open Mind Friday. Absolutely. 736 is always and the number to call. Speaking of the fair, you were at the Weed Bureau yesterday. Yeah, we How had did a good that time. go? It, it went well. Yes. I, it was really Twin Falls County, uh, uh, they call it Obnoxious Weed Bureau. <laughs> obnoxious Weed Bureau? Because <laughs> weeds are obnoxious. But anyway, it's Twin Falls County Noxious Weed Bureau. And uh, <laughs> it was interesting because we've heard quite a bit lately about this quagga mussel. Yeah. And what it can do. Yeah. And they showed me, they. it's a, I don't know, it's about a foot long. It's about four inches in diameter with a hole in the middle, just like a pipe. And that's what those things develop into and they are really a mess I and mean, and it and it uh, dries rock solid is that why what is that they have to check boats and stuff for yeah. those they come yeah. where do they come from other places oh out east somewhere out east clearly somewhere. out a, east somewhere it's a, it's a government conspiracy i'm yeah. pretty sure <laughs> i'm sure they're imported from massachusetts with a little olive oil and i don't know yeah, that's cilantro right. it's delicious but, but anyway they have that on display there and they uh they can show it to you it's very very interesting what about and weeds in the stuff. ground yeah they got they got pictures of weeds they got real weeds there to show you and they'll you know they got all they af- actually offer quite a few services so if you just stop by and talk to Callie and the crew there at the uh they're just east of the Ag Pavilion, uh, kind of down a couple places from the elephant ears, they said. So the question so, was, did you get an elephant ear? I didn't. I got a Pepsi at the 4-H uh, booth, and that was it. Oh, my God. Are you feeling yesterday. okay? Something wrong? <laughs> what happened? You uh, left the fair without fair food? Well, I'm going back today, oh, so don't worry. I'll be, at the, see. I'll be at the Twin Falls County Republican right, uh, booth today right, from right, 4 right, until right. 6. Governor Otter's going to be there and oh, many yeah. of the other elected officials. So I don't know why Millington didn't invite me. Well, I'm Because they can't you. handle the come truth. On, come on down. They can't handle Maybe the truth. Maybe you'll hear the truth for oh, a change. Oh, please. <laughs> It's anyway. Open Mind Friday, and we have a call, <laughs> 73603. Oh, I uh, guess they decided what? they weren't going to hang around. Well, fine, be that way. 
How about those Broncos? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here Can't talk about the Broncos yet. Phone's ringing again. Top Good story, morning. you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning and happy Friday. Kyle, <laughs> you happy You don't sound very Friday. happy. I know you never sound happy. It's happy Jill. Friday. What? Jill. What did I do you already? Can't, you can't <laughs> handle the truth. I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. I hey, can Kelly, handle Kelly, it. watch what you say. Words have meaning. That booth has weed. You're going to have every oh. pothead there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, looking for a smoke that's not even legal in our state. Oh, I think you should show up okay, with your well. weeds. <laughs> Have them identify your weed. Well, I'd be careful because the uh, Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department has, oh. uh, they have a lot of deputies. It's a large that are doing presence, isn't there? there? Yeah. And uh, so we were able to visit with some of those too that stopped by. Tell me they weren't all eating hi. the chocolate covered donuts. No, uh, okay. one of them had a Twinkie. Okay. <laughs> uh, they sell Twinkies there? No, I don't think so. But anyway, a he, deep had a, fried he, Twinkie? Got, he got a Twinkie. Probably a deep fried Twinkie. Oh. 736 Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi you there. i hungry talking about the monkey bread. <laughs> but you can I thought make he said at monkey brains easily. at first. What's that? And you can make those at home very easily. You just get some frozen roads rolls. You put them around a bunt pan. You drizzle butterscotch pudding oh, you're and and uh, butter and brown sugar, and you put them just put them in your oven overnight. Don't turn it on. Then in the morning they're all raised up, and you cook them, and they are yummy. Oh my wow. goodness! Do you chase it with the jalapeno limeade? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not quite that adventurous. <laughs> I know that one sounded a little More crazy. Like- more like a Diet Coke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the yeah. breakfast of champions. That's <laughs> right. Exactly. You and gotta it, offset that, it, huh? That, that, that monkey cake sounds like it has the four basic food groups right monkey there. Monkey bread. Yeah, it does. Dairy. What, and... what did I say? Monkey brains? You said monkey cake. It's <laughs> oh, monkey, monkey cake. bread. Well, when, thanks for the call. When, Thank when, you. Uh, when John first said that, I thought he said monkey brains. Well, no wonder you thought that was odd. <laughs> so and anyway. with ha- I, I was kind of stuck on the jalapeno limeade. Yeah, that is kind of Never heard of that one. Hey, by the way, we've got uh, Terry Rowe coming up. Rowe, Rowe. 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 Why do I always get that uh, wrong? I, because it's Jeanette Rowe. There you go. Yeah, we have too many Rows and Rows. Right, it's Terry Rowe. We're going to have a Row with a Rose or something uh, like Actually, that. we're just going to have the Row today. So I, yeah. Okay. From St. Luke's. Okay, yeah. She's coming up some big Epicurean event coming yes. up. Yes. Uh, on that. So, meanwhile, uh, no, I, I was there briefly at the fair yesterday, and it was very warm. It was, it was, it was hot. It's supposed to be cooling off, which will be nicer yeah. for the fair, yeah. and also the Broncos. We, I was at, um, I went to uh, the press box with uh, Snake Kendra, our sister oh, station. Oh, did you? I did. Um, I thought I would support them. It was a lot of fun, and they hung in there till the third quarter, really, and uh, then it just old Miss finally. Figured out how to play football after three interceptions in the first half. They're like, wait a I, uh, second. I saw the first part of the game. Yeah, then they had three touchdown passes. So the quarterback kind of went from, I don't know, go zero, to hero. Zero to hero. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. What well, was the final score? Do you remember? I think it was 35 to 13, but correct okay. me if I'm wrong, Somewhere which I know there. you guys will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll have Terry Rao next here on Top Story. Stay tuned. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Welcome back. We have Terry Rao with us from the uh, St. Luke's. Yes. And you've got an what? That's a big. That's pretty big word. It for is me. a big word. It's Epicurean. Epicurean. <laughs> that is five syllables, and I don't usually get past two. And I don't think everyone who attends even knows the definition. I don't think they do <laughs> <know>. either. <laughs> it's sort of those words like dilettantes, Epicurean. Yeah. They're they're highfalutin words. That's right, and you hear them all the time, but you never know what they mean. That's yeah. true. You just go along. But you for the never ride. ask because you're too embarrassed. <laughs> that's true. So what's going to go on this year at the Epicurean? Well, this year our Epicurean. Uh, evening is has a little bit different flavor to it we're moving to having the attire not be semi-formal for one thing it's denim to diamonds so oh. we're hoping people will feel a lot more comfortable and not feel like they have to especially our male counterparts get all gussied up oh yeah well, it is idaho after it all it is yeah. idaho and so we have usually 12 to 15 chefs and they prepare their signature dishes whether it's uh, an entree appetizer or dessert 
and they're from all over. We have a lot of people coming, so we're excited about that. Who are you having? But even more exciting yeah? is why we're raising the money. Okay, so what's it for this year? It's for cancer patient emergency. A lot of times when people are receiving their cancer treatments, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things can happen to them in the course of this. They may not be able to pay for their medicine. They may not be able to pay for the gas to get them back and forth if they're in one of the outlying counties. Uh, sometimes people are caught off guard and can't work for a couple months and the electricity is going to get turned off. Mm -hmm. And anyone and everyone who's ever been touched by any kind of cancer knows what kind of an ordeal it is let alone some of the other side effects. And so I'm really excited that we're raising money for this fund. Mm. It's an yeah. important one. That does sound like a good and idea. And there's no better way to celebrate and raise money than food, right? Right. Absolutely. Food brings people oh together. Yes, yes, it does. And, of course, Cactus Pizza is going to be there with us, and they've got their new chef. And I did not remember to bring his name, but it's a French name. It's wonderful. We're excited. <laughs> uh, St. Luke's will be there, of course, uh, as will the Ascension and a lot of the favorites that you've seen in the past, and we've added a few new. So we're kind of excited about uh, changing it up, making it different. We're hoping to have a little bit of country flair in our music this year, and we're hoping to kind of move Who's Epicurean. Who's going to be the band? Well, we, we're hoping we'll have the bronze there. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So we'll see. They'll be a draw on them just all by themselves. themselves that's right. So we'll see if if they've got an open night. We yeah. still I haven't heard the confirmation, so we're hoping so. <laughs> But well, you just tell them that, you know, you know Kelly Clark. Kelly, oh, Kelly yeah. sent I'm sure they'll just, That'll you know, do it, won't that's it? Wrong. They'll Absolutely. say, who? That's, uh, that's I'll right. say, who? Hey. Well, Gary graduated with my husband, so that was also a good uh, a, a good get in there and make it happen. I went uh. to school with him back at St. Ed's. Oh, many, 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 many years. Well, it was in the last, middle of the last century, actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's sort of dating you, Kelly. Oh, I, you know Kelly's what? dated every Whatever. year. I know. <laughs> every day he's dated. <laughs> So what else? Are you going to have your silent auction? We are. And uh, the team... And a live auction? Yep. Yeah. The team over at Mountain States Tumor Institute has been working at bringing together items that we can use for silent and live auction. We're still looking for some adventures. So if anyone has an adventure, like a hot air balloon, or they want to fly someone somewhere, or maybe you have some tickets laying around for a jazz game that you don't want to use, we'd love to have them because it goes for the cause. Right. And we'd love to have you uh, attend. The tickets are $100 a piece. Uh, which sounds high, but you get a lot for your money. We're going to have wine tasting and beer tasting and pretty much all the food you can eat. Right. And then, of course, the fun items this time of the year. A lot of people come for silent auction items because they want to use them for the holidays. Yeah, that's yeah, always good. Yeah, good idea. How many people do you think are helped by this? I mean, with the, or in need for help with cancer treatments? Well, I can tell you that they that it is a huge need, and that the fund does run out of money usually before we ever get into the end of the year, which is really a desperate time. Yeah. And so I have had the opportunity to watch the people come and go uh, from the tumor institute, and I thought, well, there can't be that many people coming in. I was. I have been very surprised, and yeah. we are so blessed to have Misty here. And Misty is. We support it from the valley. It isn't supported from Boise. We support it here, uh -huh. and so that's why we're raising the funds for, uh, through the Epicurean. Normally, In case people don't know what Misty is, it's the Mountain, Mountain States. States Tumor Institute. Right. Okay. Yes, and there are so many people availing themselves of that service. I am truly amazed. And we've all been touched by cancer, someone we've known, yeah. mm -hmm. ourselves, a loved one. And I just can't think of a better way to help our community than to help with some of these emergency expenses sure. that come up. Sure. Where do they get tickets, Terry? They can get tickets from uh, the foundation, 814-0070. Uh, okay. And that's the only place? And can they buy them at the door? Do you yes, rather them ahead of time? Them, they can buy them at the door. We'll have a few available, so it's good to check with us to see where we're at on the seating. And again, the date? September 26th. We're going to start at 6 o'clock with our program and eat at 7. At where? At Canyon Crest okay. Event Center. All right, very good. Well, we're out of time, but Terry, Sounds thank like you Sounds like a much. lot of fun. You're What's welcome. that number again in case you have questions? 814-0070. Okay, very good, Terry. Terry, well, appreciate always you fun. Coming in. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll be right back here on this Open Mind Friday, 736-0300. 736 
800-998-0300. That number should be in your speed dial. Definitely. Yes. Maybe just memorize it. Okay, memorize How easy it. is that? It's easy to memorize. 736-0300. That's right. Uh, just wanted to uh, remember you that uh, there is a new pawn shop in town. <laughs> it's Canyon Pawn. And Dave Hansen and the crew have a really, really nice store. It's on uh, Shoshone Street, right across from Will's Toyota, right on the corner there. It used to be Vickers Western Store many, many, many years ago. Uh, but they've got all sorts of stuff there. they got camping supplies and woodworking supplies. they got fishing poles and tools. And I drive by every once in a while, and I see, like, bicycles and little four-wheelers sitting out there by the door. And, and uh, you need to stop in and ask them about uh, how they could possibly win a Savage, how you could possibly win a Savage 17 HMR with AccuTrigger. Uh, giving that away. So stop in, see what the details are. You might be... The lucky winner. You can uh, get them online at canyonpawn.com. You can get them on Facebook at Canyon Pawn. You can call them at 933-2600. But best of all, you can stop in and see them and say hi and have a good time. Nice, friendly store, lots of good stuff. And they're doing pawn, too. So if you need some money to go to the fair, there you stop go. in at Canyon Pawn. So, uh, they're on the Shoshone Street across from Will's Toyota. That or look under your couch cushions. <laughs> yeah, you might try that, too. Seven you don't th- know what you could find. <laughs> you pawn it off. <laughs> you usually find little bits of dog food in uh, ours. 736 Top. Whoop, they, what? Okay, they're, they're not hanging around. They're just, Come on. They're headed to the fair. Come That's on. Doing. Um, just thought I would mention probably one of the most important headlines today, ladies and gentlemen. And I know that you have been very concerned about this, but the wait is over. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie have finally tied the knot. Oh, my gosh. I cannot sleep at night. I know. Well, you can now. Yes. The wait is over. The pair managed to keep one of the world's most anticipated weddings shrouded from the media glare. Mm. They wed Saturday in a private ceremony in southern France where they exchanged vows in a small chapel at the Chateau Miravelle <laughs> in the province hamlet of Corins. So there you go. And I am a new, and I've always liked Angelina Jolie, you know, because pr- first of all, she's always been very easy on the eyes. Uh, but I just found out that she's a pro-gun gal. So you know what? I am now in oh, love wow. with Give Angelina Jolie. Brad Pitt, watch out. <laughs> Here I'm I sure come. he's concerned. <laughs> you know, they said they wouldn't get married till everyone can get married, and not everyone can get married. Yeah, I guess they, it's moving that way. But they, they you know what? Gun a bit. Good for them. Now their six kids have official parents. Sure, absolutely. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, if you go to the computer and punch in traitorism dot info dot com, you'll find out that. Uh, there's a different uh, uh, notion of all these things that are being taught in the church, that, that all this great falling away, they're, they're not actually falling away from God. They're just falling away from the false doctrines of these false churches. Okay. That, uh, what it says, is, what they're saying is that Jesus is a liar. He didn't come when he said he would. Instead, he's coming in the future, and it's always in the future. It never gets here, but well, he did come just as he said he would. For for the for the Christians listening, um, he will he will, and it's this is this is kind of part of the plan because people will start talking. Well, where is he? Where is he? He's not coming. Well, in the blink of an eye, he will be here, and uh, I just I'm going to uh, not say any more other than say I am glad I am 61 and not 16. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You are on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly and Jill. How are you guys doing today? We're, great. We're just How are you? well. It's Friday. It's a three day weekend. We're just what you could know, be better. Life than doesn't this. get any better. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that at all. That's right. All right. So this might sound a little bit crazy, but I saw some uh, wildlife in the sky uh, southwest of Filer okay, on you, Thursday night. You, I was wondering if anybody else saw that stuff. You kind of cut out a little bit. What did you see? I saw some crazy lights in the sky southwest of Filer on Thursday night. It's the fair. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe what the fair was southwest of Filer, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> they could be real bright. I don't know. What's, uh, what I don't know. You... What did they look like? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it was tough. I didn't get to see them while I, I was driving when I saw them. I didn't get to uh, see them while I was stopped. 
so I was trying to pay attention to driving. But uh, that they, been, it wasn't. Were they blinking? Was it going on and off? Was it white? Was it different colors? I think they were like orange. And uh, yeah, they blinked a few times, and then I never saw them again. And uh, about ten minutes later, I saw another one. It was wow. very weird, and I just thought I would mm. put that out there on an open mind and see if anyone else saw that. Well, I don't know. Right. Yeah, we haven't heard anything thank about you. that yet, but thank you. We'll find yeah. out. Um, I've, I know I've mentioned several times on here about those orbs that I saw oh, yeah. several orbs. years ago, but those mm-hmm. were east of town, and they were close to the ground. They were within like 50 feet. That was weird. So, I still don't know what that was. We so don't. if anybody saw some weird light southwest Orange, of fire, blinking off. Now I know off. the beer garden opened at the fair, but he was driving though. So okay, <laughs> maybe that wasn't it. <laughs> Just kidding. What did you see? Did you see any funny lights up in the sky last night? Seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here on this Open Mind Friday. So you can give us a call. I don't know. I did not see, and I always miss the good stuff, it seems like. I did not see the weird lights in the sky southwest of Fighter. And he last said night. Thursday, or last night or Thursday? Yeah, well, I th- he said Thursday. That was last night. Oh, that's night. last night. Yeah. So, um, don't know. And I uh, usually, now I have, as everyone knows, I have resealed my deck. And I gave it two <laughs> coats. And the first did one, you post it the, on Facebook yes, so we all I did. could see? Oh, good. The I first, was just well, uh, there's dying. A, there's a reason to my story here. Yes. I sealed it first, and it dried very quickly. Uh-huh. And it just soaked it in, and it really looked good. So I thought, man, I'm going to give it a second coat. Okay. So I give it a second coat, and it is taking forever to dry because it's not soaking in now. It's just oh. setting there. So I like to go out on the deck, especially so in the evening or at night. So it? Well, I don't have anything back on the deck yet. I'm waiting for it to like dry. Like bugs or something? No, no, I don't. <laughs> so anyway, I like to sit on the deck and look at the sky and see. You would be surprised at how active of an air of an air route it is over Twin Falls. I mean, mm-hmm. there are planes up high flying constantly. Really? And uh, so I like to look. And I never see anything interesting like this gentleman was telling us about. So I don't know if anybody else has or not. We have another caller. Maybe they've seen some top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I, wanted to, I wanted to touch on, you had a few days ago, I think it was Miss Idaho on, yeah. on the radio. That yeah, I want to I wanna touch on something. I was thinking about that. Um, I also listened to NPR, and I was, I was listening to um, the survey they did on how uh, people, of, men of different ethnic backgrounds, look at beauty and uh, and. Uh, they say that most white men look at beauty as skinny, blonde hair, and blue eyes. And on a survey they did, where African American men and uh, and um, and Hispanics, the view on beauty is much broader. They, they it's just much broader. They and I was wondering if Jill can maybe touch on that and give me your opinion on that. It's a survey that I'm I not said. A man. I, what do you mean? Well, let me ask what Kelly that. Let What's me, the question? I can tell you that. My question is: is uh, they, they did a survey on on men of different, different ethnic backgrounds. And uh, they did a thing where, like, Anglo man, I thought this was interesting, um, that their view on beauty is uh, blonde, blue eyes, and skinny for a woman, uh, where African-American men and Latino men look at uh, uh, beauty much broader. They're all beautiful. All Kelly, women are Kelly beautiful. I think any woman is beautiful. <laughs> you well, look as a thing of beauty, well, right, Kelly? Well, I, you know, I uh, sometimes am repulsed by skinny, uh, blonde-haired, repulsed? blue-eyed... Uh, That's a strong word. Well, I know it. I know it is, but especially when they try to look like a Barbie doll. Okay, and and I uh, I guess I fall in line with the African American men and Hispanic men in this deal because I see beautiful women everywhere, and they don't have to be young. They don't have to be skinny. They don't have to have blonde hair. They don't have to have blue eyes. I mean, you just I, really, notice them all. Are uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Winnie? Um, Winnie Christensen. Christensen, when she was here. She was a very beautiful woman. Yeah. And uh, and so was Sierra. I mean, there's yeah, beauty. Yeah, Sierra you know Sanderson is beautiful. I mean, and there's, here's there's, a newsflash. We That's... men are so lucky. We have beautiful women everywhere. But you guys are so <laughs> superficial. I mean, really, right. if you're talking about the outer shell of a person, but honestly, the beauty is really, you know, within. I mean, there can exactly. be beautiful people who are quite ugly inside and you don't see the beauty right. anymore so but, but and it's just, interesting. just so we keep it everything on superficial just, a, just so we keep it on the the plane and level flight here we're just talking right now about beauty we're not talking about personality physical beauty and really you don't have to wear a size zero in order to, for me to find you beautiful 
Okay. No, and you don't have to be and by I, me. It depends on what I'm people like. I'm going to brag about myself here. I I am proud of that fact. I am proud that I can can see people uh, see see beautiful women. They're the, you I've see seen them beautiful all the six. Time. My wife is beautiful. And, you better you know, have said I, and, that. And I see women in their seventies who are beautiful. And they're everywhere. Everywhere. We're just so lucky. So he just shattered the survey. I, I don't did. Know. But yeah. actually, speaking of um, Miss Idaho, her send off party is Saturday, 1 to 3 at Lighthouse Christian yep. Church. So if you want That's to right. see a beautiful young lady inside and out, she yep. was lovely. And tall. Tall. 736 0300. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Hello? You stole my thunder there, Jill. What? Why? <laughs> How? What? <laughs> well, I'm a white male, yeah, and I don't look at just exterior. Very good. I mean, beauty is more than skin deep. I mean, a personality, a person, a personality, and everything can make a to me a woman glow yeah. because she's she's beautiful all the way through. Most of the girls when I was growing up that was beautiful and good to look at was just an absolute snot in the one even to be around. <laughs> yeah, they, I agree. They're, they're just so stuck on themselves, it yeah. wasn't even funny. It's they, true. They can't pass a mirror without breaking their neck, you know? So the guys that did this survey are just totally bait. That's all there is to it. Yeah. They're just... I, I think it was probably L'Oreal or somebody <laughs> that uh, did the survey. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was interesting that the caller wanted to know my point of view. I'm like, well, I don't know if I could answer that one, but anyway. Yeah. Well, I would happily answer answer something like that yeah so. and there you go all right so we were off to the race well, I, I do have one more headline that i just wanted to bring up i'm not going to comment on, on it or anything it's just a headline okay what? president obama says at this point we do not have a plan on what to do with the expansion of isis in syria and other areas however it has been rumored that he does plan to attend the wedding of george clooney at clooney's italian villa in september and what does one have to do with the other is so ridiculous. It, 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 you know, why well, even no. read this well, stuff we, is we, so we ridiculous. We don't have a plan for ISIS and what to do well, with Well, to this. invade in Syria? The, the, yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're going to be invading us soon if we don't do something about it. Oh, them. yeah. They're, they're going to take so, a boat you know, over here saying, and a plane yet over here. But yet we're decreasing the ranks of the military and all that stuff in a time when oh, the world is gosh. getting tougher and tougher. Hey, just a headline, folks, but he will be attending the wedding in Italy of well, George Well, that's Clooney. rumored. So, Who knows? So now we uh, we know the truth. Seven three six. What, what? Is he supposed to go to ISIS? ISIS and, and go to Syria? I mean, we're doing airstrikes in Iraq. That's no, what we're no, doing. No, no, no. He doesn't have time to worry about that. He's going to Italy. He's You're never off his duty, trip to Italy. We don't know if that's true. That's just we, rumored. Actually, it, it said rumored. It is true. George Clooney said that right. President Obama did he, where did has he answered say that? yes to his RSVP. Where did he say I that? I saw it online oh, this morning. Oh, it must be true. It's got to be. It's got to be true. It's, if it's we'll not true, they happens. can't put it on the internet. Yes. 7360300. Well, oh, no. <laughs> We're too busy arguing to answer I the phone. <laughs> okay, now now it's ringing again. Okay, <laughs> top story. You are on the air. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, Kelly and Jill. I'm I, I'm calling about the lights in Western skies. Did you yes. see them? Yeah. Um, come out to where we live, west of Miracle Hot Springs, and you'll see them all the time. It's the Air Force playing. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Are so they orange there. lights? Yeah, they have. They have. I think I don't know the technical term, but they're probably a tracer type bomb that they drop and they. They're an orange flare that poofs, and then they'll drop, and they'll poof again several times. And... Oh, so they're probably using those as practice bombs. Mm-hmm, yep. So you're out by the Sailor Creek bombing range, then? Fairly close. Wow, is that well, a little nerve- <laughs> nerve-wracking at times? It's very comforting. <laughs> I'll bet it's it is. comforting. Absolutely, I'll bet it would be. Hey, thanks for the call. Appreciate that. You wow, bet. See, All right, see, there's another the mystery. We have the best listeners. Another they always, mystery we solved. ask and they answer. That's right. Another mystery solved. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air on this Open Mind Friday. Hey, Kelly Jill's Carl. Carl, how are you? You haven't gotten any tickets, have you? No, because okay, I've good. been watching for the drones. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I only got one thing to say this morning, and that is that President Obama is supposed to be the commander in chief. Yeah. Not the golf and the wedding planner guy. Oh, my gosh. And he needs to do something. Yeah, Jill, that's true. Why shouldn't he, he play golf on vacation? Why can't you play on a weekend? He's never you off know, duty. Okay, if I went on my job and said, well, I'm going to go play golf for two months, 
I get fired. What are you talking about for two months? You've been on vacation for two months. It, it's, what? <laughs> he, he went on vacation to Martha's Vineyard, came back, me, had three press this, conferences. Carl, what are you talking about? Carl, let me tell you this. Sounds like you and I are kind of on the same level here. I oh. would. It would only be my dream for President Obama to be on vacation all the time. Yes, it would. <laughs> I mean, else. George yeah. Bush was on three times as much as as Obama by the same time in his presidency over 400 days. No one seemed to care. Why? And he, look at the damage. The, and duty. look at he the was damage. Still taking care of business. What do you think President Obama is doing? If you don't think a president is always on duty, we don't have a plan yet me. for ISIS. I mean, come on, man. This are is, we? The plan is, is: Are we supposed to invade Syria? Crisis. Are we supposed to invade Syria? This is reaching a crisis deal. It shouldn't Congress vote on acts of war? Where's Congress? They're on vacation. He hasn't even asked. They're on them a five-week vacation. They're doing airstrikes you in know, Iraq. In a case like this, I'm pretty sure the Congress would come back and make a decision. If really? Somebody would call him back. Really? Yeah. They're but, sitting there saying he should deal with it himself. Here, we we had. I just saw the headline this morning. There was a some guy in Chicago being chased by police, waving an ISIS flag out his window. It has reached our shores, and oh, we're, geez. we're stupid to think of it, uh, that it hasn't. Oh, give and, me a and break! And what, what are we concerned about? We're concerned about when's my next golf date? Uh, whose wedding am I going to be going to? That is and, so and demeaning. And things like that. Seven three six zero three. You don't even know if he's going to the wedding, but let's just put it out there. Tom it's Story, rumor. you're on the air. Good morning. You know, I, it's crazy to me that all this talk is happening now. I've been watching. Uh, you know, and I don't want to be too critical of refugees coming in, but I've been watching all of these people coming in, to even Twin Falls. How many how many ISIS members are living right here in Twin? That's what I want to know. It right, is a scary our, thought, isn't it? Because of our refugees. Well, you, look look how you look how diverse. Because... Look at all the people that they're importing into Twin Falls. They're refugees. They're, they're, they're going to be killed in well, their homes. Okay. I mean, come on. What's because you're diverse is, doesn't make you an ISIS member. What's come happening on. is is our borders are so open right now that these bad people can get in uh, even right along with everybody else because there's so many. They're overwhelming them at the border, at the southern border. Uh, and they, know, they, they have said that there are... Oh, my gosh. Th- there's an increase right now in, uh, in passports and in uh, in visas from the countries uh, like Syria and places like that. Now, maybe it's just because people are wanting to get out of there and get over here, but not all the people who are... De- the chatter that's going on right now, because we are coming up on the 13th anniversary of September 11, our officials are saying that the, t- the chatter is uh, has increased not to levels that it did before, uh, pre-9-11. Uh, the the telephone chatter and the internet chatter and such that's going on. So hey, but I'm sorry. Knows? You know what? Because you have diversity in this town and refugees come here, don't sit there and label them as ISIS members. These people are are leaving their countries because they're in threat. I don't of being think he killed. was saying that. He what did. He was, he was talking about he, refugees. But come on. Some of them could be unbeknownst oh. to anyone. Oh, and give you're, me And a you're break. saying they couldn't. I, I'm saying don't label that. That's like the person saying the okay. kids. For, no, okay. let me finish. No, That's like the no, person from Central We're America not labeling right saying now. they had Ebola. You're saying, you're saying we Come can't on. have any bad people here. That's it, not it what I'm saying. Be. But don't sit there and say because we have refugees here that have that are diverse that they're from ISIS. It's like the guy who said the kids from Central America are bringing Ebola here. Come on, stop with the hyperbole you have and do to, with facts. You have to have an open mind on this, that there's a possibility because that people coming different. into this country right now are bad people. Oh, But because someone is different does not mean that they are a terrorist. And because no, you're a Muslim doesn't not. mean you're a terrorist. But that's of what people not. are spreading. Come on. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story, you're on the air. Jill. What? You- you will agree with me on this. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to agree with you on anything today, except that it's Friday. What? I guarantee, I guarantee you'll agree with me on this, and this is a big concern of mine and been for a while, that 9-11 has accomplished one thing, and we're going to end up getting so paranoid that we're going to start profiling people, and there's going to be problems because innocent people are going to get hurt. And it's it's just sad. It's sad that it's it's but it's it's human nature when you're afraid to suspect 
anyone and everyone that's in that category. Do you think it's fair to ask the question or to to say I get make the statement that the terrorists have won? Uh, the terrorists have accomplished what they want, and that was to make us afraid. Yeah, and and they have succeeded. And bankrupt. We have, we have yeah, and they've done both, uh, and they're still doing it. We're you know we're we're dumping millions of dollars into something that is going to be almost impossible to kill because it's it's kind of like the syndicate. You can't you, kill it. Uh, if you if you cut off the ahead do you think you've got to go man we're out of time but coming up next hour we're going to be talking about a pizza restaurant in arkansas that was giving people discounts when they brought their church bulletin in but there's one group that has a big problem with that and they are demanding that they stop that's after the news here on top story Good morning, and welcome back to Top Story. 7360300 is the number to call. Third day of the Twin Falls County Fair today. That's it. That's right. Are you going to the fair? Uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, you know, if you get a chance. I don't know. I might. I I know I'm not going to the Republican booth between 4 and 6. Well, now, wait a minute. No, fine, no. I am. They don't want me. Fine. (laughs) It's fine. I'm sure they would welcome you with open arms, Would they? Absolutely. They They would. I don't know. They would. Anyway, so I'm not sure about that. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll be there from 4 to 6 today. Governor Otter's going to be there and uh, many of the other elected officials, so stop by Really? And say so are hi. you going to interview them on yeah. air? Or? Yeah, we'll be talking to them on, yeah? uh, right here. Ask them what their favorite fair food is. You know, some Probably. tough questions for the election coming That's up. That's right. Only the toughest from me. You know? <laughs> Funnel cake or monkey bread? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was funny. I thought he said monkey brains at first. Uh, I mean, wow, try that, that, one. that is unusual for the even for the county fair. You know what? You should see how <laughs> political they really are and go monkey brains or whatever and see what they say. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely monkey brains. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, so anyway, so uh, it's Open Mind Friday. Seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. Interesting story here this morning: a pizza restaurant in Arkansas is receiving both acclaim and condemnation for offering discounts to people who bring in their church bulletin. Bailey's Pizza in Searcy, Arkansas, started the discount earlier this summer as a way to get people to visit their shop. The Freedom From Religion Foundation has taken issue with the discount, sending a letter to the owners of the pizza restaurant and demanding they stop this church-related discount. How dare they? It has nothing to do with excluding anybody. Stephen Rose, who owns Bailey's Pizza with his wife Amber, said it's not specific to any church. It's another way to bring people in and make them feel welcome. How can you say it's not about excluding someone if you don't go to a church or one that passes out a church bulletin? Of course it excludes people. Or if you don't so go what? to a church at all. But so I mean, what? That's... Stop at a church, pick up a bulletin, and walk out and take it down there. Oh, come on. I can Seriously. just walk into a church. Oh, give so me your saying, bulletin. So you're saying that these people who own their own business can't offer something like this. No, what I'm saying is how can he say it's not to exclude people? Of course it is. People who don't go to church. Maybe he's encouraging people. who people. go to a synagogue. He's encouraging people, people to go to who church. People don't have a... To get a bulletin and then come to... It, it's an encouragement. He says it's not. He says it's not to exclude people. I don't know how you can no, say I'm that. No, I'm saying it's an encouragement for people uh, to go to church and get a bulletin. Th- this is the deal about businesses I don't get. Uh, why get political? Why get religious? Just sell pizza. That's sell not pizza. political. That's not religious. Of course it is. It's like... Okay. What if you like, passed out an Islam bulletin? You had to have an Islam bulletin or a mosque bulletin. People would, would be up in arms. Are you kidding me? Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, my well, gosh. Well, the Department my of Justice gosh. in Washington my would gosh. make sure that they quashed that. But this, on the other hand, they're not going to touch this with a 10-foot pole. Nah. Uh, 736-0300 is the number to call. I say more power to them. It's your business. Do what you want. If you want to offer a discount to people who bring uh, ticket stubs from some sporting event or whatever, more power to you from a church, more power to you. I don't care. It's your business. This is America. And this Freedom From Religion Foundation, you know what? Let them go bark up a tree. 736-0300. Top story. You're on the air. 
Hey, I used to work sales, and we would come up with any kind of discount we could think of just to get people in the door. It's not about inviting people that are strictly religious. It's just about driving people into the door. Someone who's not religious can go in there and ask for the same discount, and they can get the discount. It's not a big deal. I, would I don't agree. know. Do you work I for Bailey's? Agree. How do you know? How do you know they don't say, where's your church bulletin? And you only can do it with I the do church know bulletin. This. Most places, if, you know, you see these coupons from a certain certain uh, a place. A lot of times, in fact, many times when you go to a competitor, and they will honor that discount just to get back at their competitors. So, well, some hey, do do that. 736-0300, top story, you're on the air. What do you think? I think that the company has a right to do what they like with that for two reasons. Um, first is that it's not an all-inclusive exclusion like, well, only Catholics can get a discount. You know, even mm-hmm. people from the Church of Satan or, you know, Scientology can get this discount. And secondly, there are other companies out there who also have similar exclusive discounts available, like, for example, for students. Yep. So, I mean, if, if people are going to have a fit about, oh, well, you can only get a discount if you're part of church, then they should not be exclusive themselves and throw a fit about all the other similar types of discounts. Oh, great point. I like that. I have yeah, to say, right. I have to say, I, 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 I would not um, go to that pizza place again. And that would certainly be and your that's right. that's fine. That's and right. maybe that's what they want. Why is your phone ringing? Why is it I, not on silent? I don't know. We're only doing a radio know. show. I, I, I get weird calls all the time. Well, why don't you just turn it off? <clears throat> okay, there, it's it's turned off. But to me, I just think as a business, <laughs> yeah, you can do what you want. I just think some of these businesses, it's like, I, you know, you come up with things and you think, why, why do you do these things? It oh. doesn't make sense. And it was like when I worked at Reebok, there was a promotion with Dunkin' Donuts. And the... Um, and I'm sorry, but, you know, sporting good companies, footwear companies, they can tend to be sexist, which, you know, a lot of them, sorry, they were. But the promotion was this guy was from marketing, and they were going to give us when the pump basketball shoe was up, you know, the pump. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was a big right, deal. Right. Da, da, da. If you won a Dunkin' Donuts, you could win a pair of men's basketball shoes. All right? It was men's or, or boys or whatever, men's and boys. And I said, well, what if a woman wins? He goes, well, she can give it to her boyfriend or her husband. And I said... No. I said, unless the demographics of Dunkin' Donuts is all male, no. You're going to have to offer something for women or for girls or whoever, something comparable. You just cannot do that. So, So, of course, we changed it. But if you did that, do you know the outrage that starts? So I just wonder when you think of businesses, like with Chick-fil-A, with anything, I don't get it. I would just do something a little bit more uh, non-controversial. Fine. Give out a coupon anywhere. Give it out. I mean, why even get into that realm? You can do what you you. want. I think it's bad marketing. I would bet you that if someone from the Freedom From Religion Foundation took in a letter or a newsletter or some bit of... uh, material from that organization to this pizza joint, I'll bet they would honor it. We don't know that, though, do we? I'll bet they no would. No one's been to Bailey's Pizza in Arkansas. I will bet they Someone would Someone please it. go to Bailey's Pizza in Searcy, Arkansas, and see what you can bring in to get a discount. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. You know, the funny thing about all this is this is probably going to give them more exposure, and they're going to have more customers, and they know what to do. You with got it. it. You know, on the on the business side end of it, but on the other end, you know, we we have the atheists complain about you know we've taken prayer out of the schools, and uh, even though people that weren't Christian never were forced to pray, we have people who get upset about the cross as you're going into Boise up on a little hill up there that it offends mm-hmm. them, and I don't know if it's like a vampire burning them when they go past it or what, but yet here's the here's the ironic thing about all of it, when individuals get to prison. One of the first books that they're offered, or one of the first books that they can get in the library, is the Bible. They weren't taught any of this as young kids, you know, just the basic Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. And now look where they are. So, you know, the atheists are, are just one more step in helping to destroy this country and, you know, take away what this country was founded on, you know, and it was a basic Christian belief but we're not a theocracy and that's and that's what our constitution is trying to uphold that we're not a theocracy and that's the thing that does it and so when you have governmental you have schools you have governmental properties 
we do not have it okay, determine what kind of religion. So, th I mean, when you talk about, pizza I'm referring Cersei, to, the, but I'm referring to the caller when he said they've taken this out of schools, they've taken it out of, of that. Government. I understand that, but yeah, they can do what they want. But I'm saying, you know, don't blame it on, uh, you know, for taking prayer out of school. That it's trying to uphold our constitution. You know, I wouldn't really even care if the Freedom from Religion Foundation just said, you know what, we don't really like what you're doing. That that wouldn't even bother me, but they have written a letter to them demanding that they stop. They can, you know, you know but you can do what you want. You it's know America. What? That's ridiculous. You can do what how, you want. How dare you? If you don't want to take advantage of this, then don't worry about it. They have every you right can, to yeah. write the letter, and they have every right to to exactly. uh, do that coupon. Exactly. But so don't there you write go. to me and tell me in my private life and my private business that something you don't agree with that you demand I stop. You know what? Go jump in a lake. You know what? They can do what they want. They can write the letter. The people can abide by the letter. The people can do their coupon. They can do what they want. It's America. You can't prevent someone from doing that. That's why we live here. The point of it is, is as a business, I don't even know why you, you touch your toe in those waters. I don't, I don't get it. Just let people come in and have pizza. Let people That's have their little Chick-fil-A and waffle fries. Stay out of the political arena. Stay out of the religious arena. Stay out of it. It's, it, it's not good business. It's Seven, not good business. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly and Jill. How good are you Good morning, guys? Semper Fi. How are you? Semper Fi. <laughs> Jill, you what? had way too many cups of coffee this morning. I didn't even have coffee. I'm not drinking it anymore. <laughs> well, listen. What? Listen, I look at it this way. You know, it's their right to do what they want. I mean, if somebody doesn't want to uh, patronize that business, but man... What if somebody doesn't like students that gives discounts? What if somebody doesn't like military that gives discounts? Or senior citizens. Or senior citizens. I yep. mean, this is America. This is free country. And we have a right to do what we want. Just like you said, Jill. Yeah. They have a right to write the letter. They I don't do. like it. I don't like it. But, man, if somebody wants to do something to drum up business, I thought it great advertisement this is what we call free enterprise yep you see i wouldn't it. i wouldn't you think it. it was great because if i i don't go to a church so then you think okay well, well that's nice um but to me so then i would be like wow that's kind of really kind of rude i wouldn't i wouldn't patronize it well, you know you got to think of everyone you but you don't i mean i just think it's bad marketing fine seven three six zero three hundred oh let's see what we got here top story you're on the air good morning Good morning. This is Pat. Hi, Pat. Pat. We haven't heard from so you in a while. How's Jill and Kelly today? Besides we're piling everybody up, we're just having a great time. <laughs> how are you? Where have you been? I'm oh, busy working and listening to you guys. Wow. You know, I have relatives that live in Arkansas. Yeah. And the people that haven't been to Arkansas, they're not a different country than where we're at. Yeah. There's a church on every corner of every corner somewhere in that, in that state. I mean, you go even out in the country, and every mile, about the end of every mile road is a little church. Yep. And that those people there are very church-going people. They, that's a very church-going area, and we're, we're putting words into things that aren't there because that's pretty common for that kind of, for that area. For them to offer discounts to... So, I don't like know about that? the discounts, but I'll tell you what, everybody goes to church. And I asked one of my relatives there, and I says, and how come there's a church on every corner? He said, well, if you get mad at that minister, you just go over to the next mile and go to that church. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe the, the churches call. should offer pizza. That's that's the, the 14th Baptist Church of the uh, United Pentecostal Front or something like that. <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back here on Top Story, 736-0300. Seven three six zero three zero zero was the number to call on this Open Mind Friday, and I just wanted to say that yesterday's one hundred dollar instant winning name is Dewey Cavan. Dewey Cavan, congratulations! And the one hundred dollar word of the day for today is my favorite writing utensil: crayons. Crayons. C R A Y O N S. Crayons. Didn't they always have like the weirdest colors? You're like sienna. What is that? I know. You know, they'd have the weirdest colors. Chartreuse. Well, I understand. What is sienna Puce. color? I don't know. 
<laughs> I know red, white, and blue. And then they have blue, cars named it. Sienna, but I'm like, what is that color? I never knew. But anyway, okay. Crayon. Well, now that you've gotten us totally off track, yeah, you can go to our website yeah, yeah. at newsradio1310.com, click on Word of the Day, type in crayons, almost said Sienna. <laughs> Type in crayons and listen Monday. And if you hear your name Monday and you played the word today, you win 100 bucks. There you go. That's how easy that one is. Um, Joan Rivers I know. is resting comfortably in a medically induced coma hmm. just hours after she performed a typically acerbic show in Manhattan and joked about her own death. No way. Yeah. So that'll teach you. The 81-year-old comic was rushed from the Upper East Side Clinic to Mount Sinai Hospital in critical condition Aww. yesterday morning after she stopped breathing during a routine medical procedure. They said she was having throat surgery, something on her yeah. vocal cords, so I wonder if she had, was having a nodule taken off. Probably. Could very well have been. A picture of health only the day before. Rivers accepted a bouquet of flowers from a fan as she finished her stand-up performance at around 9.30 p.m. on Wednesday. A picture of, oh, sorry, I was reading what? the same paragraph again. <laughs> the entertainment legend even, hey, there's, there goes Jack. Hi, Jack! The uh, entertainment <laughs> legend even posed for pictures with a fan on the way out of the Lori Beecham Theater, only to suffer respiratory failure less than 12 hours later during surgery on her throat. You know, so. surgery at any time, any age, but when you're 81. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. you have to wonder, and you're like, how bad was her nodule? She could still talk. Yeah. And I'm sorry, she is a funny lady. She is crude. She is rude. She is socially unacceptable and funny as heck. She really <laughs> is funny. I mean, still at her age, man, with it and funny. Well, she's on that. She has that fashion police show, and my wife watches that religiously. See, I, I don't mean, watch she records that. it and plays back, especially after, like, the Emmys and the. Academy Awards because they go through and they grade everyone on what they're wearing, you know. I and wanted, my wife just loves that stuff. I wanted to watch that <laughs> documentary on her that she did because she is just like the hardest working person. Yeah, she really and is. She just works yeah. it. And she's 81, you think? And you know, Still 81, doing stand up in a club. And 81 that more, and anymore isn't that old. Wait, 81 still doing stand up in a club? My mother's 81. Could you see my mother doing stand up in I a could. club? I could, actually. You could. Yeah, I could see Actually, mom my mom is funny, but anyway. 736 Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, Kelly, I'd, I'd like to be introduced to some of those men standing around 2,000 years old waiting for the Lord to come. Can you imagine the stories they could tell you? <laughs> I know. Believe me, yeah, that would that would be interesting. Um, and well, anyway, I don't want to get off on a religious. Oh my God, we already just we're did. We already did. We've only got thirty minutes left. We just did pizza <laughs> in Arkansas, people. <laughs> what more Here, can we do? Here's another one. New York Senator. Oh wait, no, 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 you no, were no, going to no. talk I got about the wrong one. Oh my God, where's my story? Here we are. One oh Florida mother's Facebook status didn't go over well with her son's preschool. Mother Ashley Habat recently complained on Facebook after the Sunshine Christian Academy, and that is S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E, Christian Academy, didn't give enough notice about Picture Day. Even though Habat said her Facebook post was private, she still tagged the school, and the next day she was reportedly told by school administrators that the school would not be a good fit for her son, according to Jacksonville, Florida. Wow, Outlet maybe because the school wasn't very understanding. <laughs> In the post Whoa. in uh, question, Habat asked, Why is it that every single day there is something new I dislike about Will's school? Are my standards really too high? Or are people working in the education field really just that ignorant? Ouch. A letter of, dis of dismissal given to Habat from the school said her relationship with Sunshine did not get off to a very good start the first day of school. Really? Stating that she utilized social media to call into question not only the integrity but the intelligence of our staff. These actions are also consistent with sowing discord, which is spoken of in the handbook that you signed. Ooh. The school did not respond to requests uh, for comment. The incident has drawn responses on both ends of the spectrum. On mommy-ish, Maria, uh, Maria Guido asserted that Habat should have tagged the school in her post. Should not have Should tagged. not have tagged it. Sorry, so, uh, sorry you have to find a new preschool, but this is really your own fault, she wrote. On The Stir, Lisa Fogarty said that she hopes the school forgives and forgets. 
So what do you think? If you have a mother out there who's constantly posting derogatory stuff about the private school that she's sending her kid to, I'm kind of thinking, you know, if it's really that bad, get your kid out and take them somewhere else. Then someone said, and someone wrote, well, she believes it's in Christian values, one of which is forgiveness. Maybe they should have forgiven her. Maybe they should have talked to her. Maybe they said, what is, your pro- what is the problem that's going on here? Instead of just giving the kid a letter, leaving his friends, whatever. What do you guys think? Yeah, what would you do? 736-0300, the number to call, and we will be right back. We must be back. 736-0300 was the number to call here on this Open Mind Friday. I don't know. I see several things that both sides could have done in that little issue there, but we'll talk about that when we come back. But first, I want to tell you. I was like, where are we going? Well, <laughs> you got to tell us that. And I've mentioned this before that uh, a far more of Idaho can fly over your fields and take infrared photography. And you're saying, well, so what's the big deal about that? Well, with infrared photography, it shows up things that you would never notice with just regular photography or even especially with a naked eye. Mm. And they fly over giving you a th- kind of a third dimension look at your fields. And you can look down and you can, you can see if the water is getting where it's supposed to be. You might have some dry spots in your fields and not even know it. Even if you have a pivot, which is supposed to water everything equally, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then difference in ground densities. And all of this plays in and it, and it makes a difference. And you may think you're getting maximum yield from your crops... And then you look at it from an infrared point of view from the top down, and you might look at that and say, oh, wow, we've got some problems here. Well, then you can take care of these problems. You can fix them. You can get the water where it's supposed to be and increase your yield and more than pay for these overflights from Farmore of Idaho. Ask them about Infrared Baron, 324-3341 or farmoreofidaho.com, and they'd probably love to have you just stop in their store in Jerome and uh, and say hi and talk about infrared baron and tell them that uh, that we told you about it. That's right. Okay, there's there are uh, several avenues here that we could go with this story about this mother on Facebook who posted all this stuff about geez, this school is really bad because of this or that and the other thing, and they posted on Facebook and 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 in, tagged the school and tagged the school and you know Facebook first of all should not be the avenue that we choose to communicate with people. Why, that, why when can't we have, someone... Especially on a, on a personal level where we have an why, issue. Why don't we talk to people business. anymore? I know. Why I know. can't we just go in and talk to the person instead of posting? It's like it's like stabbing someone in the back, talking behind their back. You, in you're public. telling in everyone, public. yet the person doesn't know and finds out on Facebook. Like, yeah. I don't get this. Yeah, so she should have gone in and talked to the school if she had a problem. Yeah, and so now that her kid... Apparently she's had a problem from day one at this school. Well, and then she said they didn't give enough notice for picture day, so I'm sure her child's now in a lime green shirt, and everyone in the school class picture now has to suffer because she didn't pay attention. (laughs) This one kid in the lime green shirt, which will now not look as nice as everyone else. And the kid issues now for the rest of his life. Not to mention all the other parents if it was a group picture going, (laughs) "Why, why didn't his mother dress him better? What, what? So anyway, I, I don't understand. You have problems with the school. You're, you're, it's a private school, I think, right? Yeah. She must be paying yeah. money it's to a, go it there. It looks like a parochial school. So just go in so. and talk to them and tell them what your concerns are and see if they can fix it. If not, maybe your child should go to another yeah. school. And I don't know. Maybe she did. It doesn't sound like doesn't she did. It doesn't sound like Maybe it. she did and couldn't get any satisfaction. I find that hard to believe. And then on the other hand, maybe the school should have contacted her and said, hey, would you please come in and we'll talk about this. Before giving her a if letter of dismissal. Yeah, and so. it is a Christian school. What happened to forgiveness? Turn the other cheek. Yada, yada, yada. Something. You know, that's what some people said. But the, the bottom line is, you know, if you do have a problem like that with a business or something, and, and if it's that bad then take your child out and put them in another school. Right. Maybe. Rather than just be a thorn in the side of the school that's there. You know, you decide maybe you're going to pick on them. Well, they're not going to be able to do anything right, and when they don't do it right, I'm going to post it on Facebook. It's so just uh, at, at some ridiculous. point, maybe the, the school has to say, you know what? You're not cooperating. You're making no attempt to cooperate. So why don't you just take your child and leave? See, if I was the school, instead of sending a letter of dismissal, I would call her in and say, I understand you're having some problems mm-hmm. reading this. What is your problem? What can we do to help this? You know, or address it. Instead of, 
I don't understand this. It's like we have more communication than ever, yet no one talks one-to-one anymore. That's right. Honestly. That is true. I mean, people, friends are texting each other instead of speaking the, the oral word. We, I just talked to we them. We work in a building here, I don't know how many square feet it is, maybe 3,000 square feet of that. And we have email. And we don't, somebody can be in the next cubicle. You know, all you have to do is raise your voice and they will hear you. But no, we sit there and we write them an email. <laughs> You well, know? I mean, in email, I can understand. Sometimes you need it in writing, yada, yada, yada. I, don't, I get that. But, you know, but just if, I'm what I'm saying is... with your friends, you see a group of teenagers, they're texting probably the same person in the group they're standing with. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, we think it's as bad now. We ain't seen nothing yet. We will This mutate. generation that has started communicating via texting and social media. Well, I oh, think they are having interpersonal yes. relationship issues. This is going to be chaos, ladies and gentlemen, when these kids grow up. They can't deal. You can't negotiate. No. You can't talk. You send a text. Is that how you're going to deal with your spouse? O-M-G. Things are going to get really bad, folks. We ain't seen nothing yet. 736-0300, the number to call. 736-0300 is the number to call. Up next, we're going to talk about the sleaze balls in Congress. The On a senators. whole nother level. Yes, but first I want to tell you about Pat Hartzell from Stanley & Company. He is anything but. He's a nice guy. He's got the low and honey loader, and he wants you to call him up and make an appointment to see one of these honey loaders in operation so that you might decide it might be something that you could use on your feedlot or dairy. Uh, his uh, a number is 280-1167, 280-1167. One one six seven. Say, Pat, I heard Kelly and Jill talking about the low and honey loader. I think it's time that we consider one of these. And he'll say, you know what? Let me make an appointment for you. That somebody who's using one, I'll get back to you and I'll meet you there. Just like that. Just like that. If nothing else, you can call Pat and just say hi. Oh, because I'm sure he would like that. Yeah, he would. Two eight zero eleven sixty seven. Pat Hartzell with Stanley and Company and the low and honey loader. There you go. Okay, so. Um... This is interesting. You know, we talk about Congress. Like, you know, you wonder, could they have a lower approval rating? And then you think, no, I don't think that's possible. But it could be. But then you read something like this. Um, New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. I, I'm Gillibrand. Sure you, Gillibrand. Have you and seen her? I think her? it's Kirsten. I don't, I don't think so. I think it is. What, okay, whatever. I'd bet money. Kirsten? Kirsten Gillibrand. See, I, I've heard of Gillibrand, but whatever. Gillibrand. Okay. Well, has she's a pronouncing new book. it wrong if she's saying Gillibrand. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, you know, I could write my own book. All right. I'm going to write my own book. She has a new book you coming out. Did. Yeah, no, something a little bit bigger than recipes. You're going down, pal. <laughs> anyway, she has a new book coming out. It's called Off the Sidelines and has been making the media rounds to promote it. The New York Post highlighted parts of the book today in an article titled Gillibrand Male Colleagues Called Me Porky After Baby. Washington Whoa. Post. As awful as that headline is, things get worse in the book, according to the story. One quote in particular stands out. Gillibrand re relie relieves. Gillibrand reveals that one male senator, after she lost about 50 pounds, came up behind her and gave her ways to squeeze. Don't lose too much weight now, he told her. I like my girls chubby. She says that he was one of her favorite senators, too. As Gillibrand's title infers, the book goes on into detail about the things that women in politics still have to deal with that their male counterparts, well, actually don't. Yes, there are more women in Congress than ever before, but there are still far fewer women than men serving. There are 20 women in the Senate, 79 women in the House. According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, women make up only 24.2% of all state legislatures. A 2013 article from the Texas Observer highlights how this is a problem for women legislators across the country, for women legislators across the country. Um, the reporter tells of the stories women politicians have told her. Some told of senators oogling women on the Senate floor. Can you imagine? You think it's so distinguished. It's so, like, you know, awestrucking that you should be on the Senate floor. Oogling on the Senate floor or... Is that oogling or ogling? Are you? What are you? What are you? What am I what? What? what every word I have to say? What? I, I, it's not well, ogling. Well, pronounce it correctly. It's not ogling. Are you sure? Yes. It's only one O. It's not ogling. Okay. Ogling? Who says ogling? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, my Go ahead. gosh. 
watching porn on iPads. What? Yes. The outrage. On state-owned computers. Yes, now the outrage of legislators hitting on female staffers or using them to help them meet women. And of hundreds of little comments in public and private that women had to brush off to go about their day. Some said they often felt marginalized, not listened to, and that sexism in the legislature made their jobs harder and at times produced public policy hostile to women. Yet despite their strong feelings, women in the Capitol rarely talk about, except in the most private discussions, the misogyny they see all the time. It's just the way the legislature has always been. Gillibrand surely isn't alone in having to deal with such comments with her male colleagues at the Capitol, although some of her encounters are jaw-droppingly bad and offensive. When she was still in the House, a Southern representative told her, you know, Gersten, you're even prettier when you're fat. (laughs) Anyways, the New York Post has a few more examples in Gillibrand's book. It comes out on September 9th. So anyway... Now and you say, oh, that's just and her. And she's not flattered by that. I she's mean, she's blo- anybody yeah, why? told me she can't that I, take a compliment. Hey, Kelly, you're pretty good looking, even though you are fat. I would actually take that as a compliment. You know, the fact that you even say that, I'm not even going to acknowledge the statement. But anyway, hey, I'm CNN's just Dana Bash revealed on Thursday that she has been on the receiving end of some pretty gross comments from male senators too during her career as a congressional reporter. Bash was talking with Brooke Baldwin about Senator Kirsten Gillibrand's eye-opening disclosure that male colleagues of hers had openly and lewdly discussed her weight on repeated occasions. Bash agreed with Gillibrand's statement that only older men said these kinds of things, but she was very clear that they occurred. After I had my son three years ago, I got some comments that would blow you away from male senators, talking about getting my figure back and things like that. You know what? It's hard to address. It's it's just hard to deal with. And the fact that you have to put up with this at a workplace, shame on them and our taxpayer dollars. I just hope they name names. I'm going to read her book. I think they should. I, I, I think I they really should, do. too. You know, you know what? This has been going on since, so it's okay? since Adam and Eve. So it's okay? I'm just saying. No, it's I'm not, not saying okay. it's okay. But it's been going on since Adam and Eve. So and why say going that? it's going to go on until the second coming. So why say that? So Well, it's just because there it's, are some no. things you can't fix. It's the older male senators who the, think it's okay to talk to women like this that shouldn't be in the Senate, that shouldn't, shouldn't be in the, the House. The women should fight back. They These should women, call them old they should you know they should you gotta file fight complaints fire. you gotta fight fire they should with file fire complaints. Oh, malarkey that doesn't do any good oh fight really fire with we fire. would hate to do Tell that them they're old it's time right. for the huckabee report yeah that's demeaning you can hear the huckabee report each weekday at this time brought to you exclusively by waddell and reed laura nelson josh funk and steve stanger financial advisors and the number to call is 736-6563 Next, <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday, we're picking the winner for the lunch. The win the win the lunch with Kelly and Jill at the Canyon Crest Dining and Events Center and a ride in the limousine. For the August winner. So you got until, what, uh, well, midnight, midnight August midnight 31st. Monday. Yeah. yeah. Now, we're not going to be here Monday. No, Monday is September 1st. We're picking it on the 2nd, so they have right. until August 31st. Right. But I'm just saying, we're not going to we're be here Monday. We're not going to be here Monday, Labor Day. And my good friend and confidant, Glenn Beck, will be mm. setting in for us on Monday morning. That is so nice of him. Yeah, he, he tells me, he says, you know, anytime I can do your Jill a favor, you just let me know. He doesn't know who I am. So I, so I said, <laughs> hey, can you can, can you set in for us Monday? I know it's Labor Day. Oh, no he problem. He has no idea He was planning on taking it off, but because he's going to be setting in for us, he said he'd do it. What a treat so, for our listeners. There you go. But hey, sign up for lunch with us. We had a great time with Ray and Katie Massey. We had we delicious lunch. You had your delicious coconut fried chicken, which it you was, thought was yeah. like delicious. Well, you, homemade. And, and, yeah, and you can't find just regular old fried chicken anymore. It's all just strips. This but is that on was the bone. Really on the bone fried chicken. It looked like southern chicken. You know, I will tell you what, man, it, your life just doesn't get any better. In a that. cast iron skillet. That's how that looked like it was yeah, made. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It really did. But anyway, it's lovely out. If you haven't gone to Canyon Crest in a while, go. They have a new chef, Richard um, Berger. He's, del- you know, he's he's very accommodating. He'll do whatever. Lord yeah. knows if he can accommodate me, he can accommodate anyone. Oh, believe me, <laughs> folks. You, 
truer words have never been spoken. Have you, you have watched no idea. When Harry Met Sally, everything's on the side. Take this out, add this to, do whatever. And they're always, I say it in a nice it's way. It's like my daughter, when she when I go to a restaurant with her, she'll she'll order the dish and say, oh, and can you make this instead oh, of yeah. this? And can you, I don't want any of that. And can you I change know. this and this and this? And it's like. And as people have gotten more with their food <laughs> issues, they're more accommodating, but they're very lovely. Though You can't get a better view. You cannot. That's true. That's true. I will be at the Twin Falls County Fair today, and this is not about me, okay? No, it's not. This is about the, the Twin Falls GOP and Governor the uh, Otter will be there and many of the other elected state officials and the local officials. We're going to be talking to them on the radio from 4 to 6. But you know what? It would be fun asking if you him, just came down and joined us. Asking them the tough questions. Funnel cake or monkey bread? Or elephant ears. Nava, yeah, Nevada, what is it, Navajo taco or tater pig? <laughs> These are the questions and burning answers you want to know. We're going to be finding this out today between 4 and 6. So we'll see you at the fair and, and have fun at the fair. We'll see you Tuesday. Goodbye, Jill. Bye, Cal. Have a great weekend.